Welcome to Click View Tips and Tricks. My name is Josh Good. I'm a Solutions Architect here at ClickTech. In this video, we're going to look at how to transfer the intersection of selections from two groups into a third group. So say we want to do some analysis, and that would produce a group of products uh, in group one. And then we'll do some alternate analysis, and that will produce a list of products in group two. And we want to then do the analysis on the intersection of those two groups, so all the products that appear in the group one list and the group two list. So how do we do this? To figure out which products we want for group one, we could set up alternate states with several list boxes like I have here. And then as I make selections, that will make a list of product names uh, in my group one selections. And you can see each of these list boxes have all been set up to the alternate state group one. And just as a reminder, if you need to set up alternate states, you go to settings and document properties, and then you select alternate states. And that's where you can assign the various alternate states. I've done the same thing down below with group two. So as I make selections here, I have a separate list that appears there. So the final result of what we'll get is if I make some selections in group one, and I make some selections in group two, I end up with two separate lists of product names. And then to group three, I want to transfer only the products that appear in both lists. And I'll push the transfer intersection button, and that will transfer only the shoes that appear on both lists. Let's go over how to set this up. As indicated before, the first thing to do is to create your two sets of groups uh, and the list box is appropriate for that. So in this case, I set up a customer's order year, order month, and product name. Down below in the blue here, this is just showing us the list of uh, products that are, that are selected. And that's done by using the concatenate function. So concatenate, and then I'm using the alternate states, group one, so I'm only concatenating group one for product name, and then I'm separating it by a comma. And then the same thing down here. We then need to bring those two lists together and only include the intersection. So the way that's done is by using the star between the two groups. So down below here, I, I have the intersection listed, and that's concatenate group one star group two product name. Now, when we want to make a selection using the select in field action, you actually need to have a very specific syntax in order to make this work. And that syntax is, is pretty much well known, uh, which is you put brackets around it, and then you put a pipe, and then brackets on the other side. So you'll often see uh, numbers selected like that and so forth, and there's a lot on community about how to do that. The thing with uh, text strings, though, is if we have a space in the text string, then, then click view is unable to resolve that because space indicates a new expression being written. So we need to take it a little bit further, and we need to, instead of having a space, we put the question mark in. And the question mark in click view is a single character wildcard. Not to be confused with a star, which is a multi-character wildcard. So we edit the expression a little bit further, and we use this expression. So we have in the center here our concatenate the intersection of group one and group two, and we're going to separate it by a pipe. We're then going to add in the brackets on either side, and then finally we're using the replace function to replace any spaces with a question mark. And I'll post this expression as part of the uh, video um, in, in the commentary. So then we can go into this button here, and go into the properties, and in the actions we can do a select in field, and we use that exact same expression. It's just been pasted into here. And that works really well, but I've also added select possible product name. And the reason I do that, I'll just delete it to start, uh, is if you just push that and leave it the way it is, you can see that it actually returns in the current selections box the text string that we're using to do the search. So just clear out the selections here in group two. And when I push the transfer selections, see it it's not really very human readable and it would be confusing to most uh, most users. So what I like to do is in the, in the select in field, I always like to add in select possible for the same field in the current selections box. There's one more very important thing. When we're creating this button, we need to apply each action to the correct alternate state, which in this case is group three. Because that will act on these elements here, which have both been assigned to group three uh, alternate state. There and there. So now when I push the transfer intersections, 
you see it, it shows it in a much more common uh, format that we're used to seeing with the commas between uh, each element of the product name. So just again as a review, you set up your various list boxes with your groups you want to have. Then you set up a third group uh, with uh, and assign those to, to your third group of your alternate states. And then your transfer, your intersections button or action is going to be applied. First you do a select in field using the expression which uses the intersection of the groups. And you apply that action to the alternate state. And then I like to add a select possible just to give my current selections box the look that I like. That concludes ClickView tips and tricks for today. There's lots of more information on how to use ClickView on Click Community, as well as we have expert services and our partners who can help you with your specific ClickView deployment. Thank you. Mm -hmm.